we were of course being brought up on an island where there was 98% black people in my country all the power and the economy is in the hands of 4% white people so as a young kid this was a concern for me uh, the 4% was rich and wealthy 98% poor depressed and my father was a Baptist preacher so I asked my father uh, is God prejudice is God racist why does God make those people rich and we poor why are they on that side of the fence and we on this side of the fence why can't we go to their schools why can't we drink to their fountains why can't we go to their cinemas I mean it was apartheid basically in our nation yeah and so my father couldn't answer me uh, being a pastor I thought he could have you know at least con you know consoled me but he said look son it's just the way it is we gotta accept this and I'm thinking this can be the way it is because if God loves and if God is wealthy and God is powerful why am I poor why am I speaking with roaches and rats? Why am I living in, you know, on a mat? Mm. And Why so, are you being called a nigger? Oh, listen, the names that they called us was amazing. <laughs> All of my teachers were white teachers from Scotland, England, Wales, and their attitude toward us was not the best. And so I grew up in this very oppressive, depressing environment. But I decided, if there is a God, I need to meet him myself because I don't like the one my father is talking about. <laughs> and uh, 13 years old, I went out in, in, in uh, that wooden house out on the island looking at the sky I saw the stars and I said if you were there say something to me nothing I said if you were there show me a sign nothing I said if you if you were there uh, show me some evidence you exist nothing and I became very frustrated as a teenager and I said I guess God doesn't exist and then I heard a voice in my mind the voice simply said I never told you to see me hear me touch me or feel me I told you to believe me if you believe I exist you believe in me then I will reveal myself. So here I am, 13 years old, <clears throat> I'm hearing this voice and I go, okay, I believe you exist. And then the voice says, yes, but the devils also believe I exist. Mm -hmm. So then the voice says, don't just believe I exist, believe me. I said, believe you what? Believe what I said. I said, what did you say? Then the voice says, read the four gospels. So 13 years old, I picked up the Bible, couldn't understand all this stuff, this book called the Bible. Yeah. And um, I began to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four uh, Gospels of the New Testament. And I read them through. By the time I was 14 years old, I had memorized the entire four Gospels. Memorized them. I knew everything about the content. And what happened to me was I was introduced to a perspective of God I never saw before. And that changed the way I thought about myself, about the world, about people. And I began to believe that nothing was impossible. And so from that point, I went to school, age 14, I had a white teacher from Scotland, Mr. Robinson. Hmm. Mr. Robinson came to the class, 38 little black kids, and he began to talk to us about the fact that we were, in, we were not complete humans, we were half-breed humans, black people can't learn sophisticated things. He told me that I was a half-breed monkey, I would never learn, uh, my brain was not developed properly. I was retarded. Teacher in school? The teacher told us this. And he stood before my desk and hit on the desk. He says, you're stupid, you're black, you're a nigger, you can't learn, you are retarded, you are, you are uneducable. I mean, the word, I remember the words. And I sat there weeping as a kid. Because this, this man was telling us these things. And I was an F student in his class. Mm -hmm. F. Failing student. Yep. So my conclusion was, maybe he's right. He says, you're a half-breed monkey, retarded, uneducable nigger. Mm. I said, maybe he's right. I went home and told my mom. I said, mom, the teacher said that I am retarded, I'm a half-breed monkey, I am uneducable, and I'm a nigger whose brain is not developed. My mother said, don't you ever say that again. She shook me. And then she gave me this book that she called the Bible. And she said, memorize this statement. It was a statement in the Bible. And it simply said, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above far beyond all I can ever ask, think or imagine, according to the power that working within me. Now you, now you know I know it, right? Yeah. That's how fast I said it. What book is that? What, what? Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. I knew that. I knew Powerful. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Okay. I, see, Jeff got this down on the side. <laughs> right. So I, I memorize it. Let me quote it slowly. It says, now unto him who is able to do exceeding above all you can ever ask for think about or imagine mm -hmm. according to the power that worketh within me by the time i finished memorizing it after three hours 
I suddenly realized that what I imagined was possible and the power was not in my teacher, it was in me. I went back to the school and I decided I'm going to educate myself at age 14. So I read all the books on geometry, the books on English, the books on history. I memorized all of the calculations of algebra and my classes turned around in three months. I became a B student in six months an A student. I graduated top of the school the following year and I became the number one student in the school by the time I graduated from high school. What did Mr. Robertson say? Well, I tell you what, Mr. Robertson was a problem because when I graduated, they gave me a plaque as the, the most you know, improved student in the, in the, in the school. Mm -hmm. I took the plaque and took it to Mr. Robertson. Mr. Robertson, this is for you from a monkey. Oh, you did But the story doesn't end there. Of course, I got punished when I got home. My mom says, you gave the plaque away? I said, yes. I gave it to the teacher who told me that I was not able to learn. A few years after that, I went to college. I got three bachelor's degrees in four years, a master's degree in 18 months, five doctorate degrees that I have today bestowed upon me by five different universities. Well, I'm just a monkey, right? <laughs> so I went to London to facilitate a leadership uh, training course in downtown London. Hotel was filled with people, over 500 people showed up, and I'm speaking on leadership. At the end of the session, I'm, sta I'm sitting in the lobby of the hotel, and there's a long line of people, and I'm autographing my books for them, and they were buying books, you know, in, in that area. And this old white man with a cane walks up to me trembling. He's shaking. And he puts two of my books on the table, and I looked at them. One of them was very greasy and dirty, and it was marked up and dogged. And I said, sir, I'd like to see my book like this. That means the person read it. I said, thank you so much for reading the book. And the old man said, this book changed my life. I said, sir, that means so much to me as an author. And I autographed the book for him. And then I autographed him the, the new book he had just bought. And I thanked him, shook his hands, and he just stood there. And I said, sir, there's a line behind you. Why don't you allow us to come? And he just stood there looking at me, didn't say a word. And I said, sir, I appreciate you coming to the seminar. Thank you for coming today. Please allow the others behind you to come forward. And he just stood there looking at me, wouldn't move. I said, sir, is there something the matter? And then he said, I used to live in the Bahamas. I said, really? Where? He said, in Nassau, the capital. I said, sir, that's where I'm from. I said, what did you do when you were there? He said, I was a teacher. I said, where did you teach? He said, C.H. Reeves Junior High School. I said, sir, that's my school. He said, yes, I taught there. He said, you don't remember me, do you? I said, no, sir. He said, I'm Mr. Robinson. I said, you, Mr. Robinson. Then suddenly I realized, under all the wrinkles, this old man, yeah. bent over, was the teacher who called me a half-breed nigger, monkey, uneducable. retarded, uneducable. I jumped up from my table, ran around, I grabbed him and I hugged him, and we hugged each other. He wept on my shoulders, I wept on his, and all these people in the lobby of the hotel downtown London confused. They said, this black man hugging this white man and they're crying and kissing each other oh. on the cheeks and everything. And everybody's like, what's going on here? But you see, that moment I realized that this man was transformed by my book. Mm -hmm. And while we are hugging, he said to me, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm saying, sorry for what? He says, I just took a train from Scotland, took the ferry. When I heard you were coming, your books are up in Scotland in our bookstores. And I saw that you were coming, and I came down to London just to see you to tell you I'm sorry. I said, sorry about what? He said, I'm just sorry. Then I realized what he meant. Yeah. And I said, Mr. Robinson, yeah. You mean you actually read the book written by a monkey and a half-breed nigger? He's, I said, you mean a monkey changed your life? And he laughed. I laughed. We hugged. We kissed each other. And I said, Mr. Robinson, don't you ever again mm. underestimate a human. That had hurt him for many years, hadn't it? Absolutely. That guilt. It, he saw my success and he remembered that he did not treat me properly. So I tell people, yeah. never cancel people. Mm. Don't assume you know anybody. And don't speak negative to any child. Because in that child could be a best-selling author. My goodness. Today, you know, my books are, in, are, are textbooks in that school. In that same school? Where he called me a monkey. Oh.